This is what a typical Japanese wedding is like. So this is gonna be a special one because I get to share with you a real deal Japanese wedding. And even more special is that it's my sister-in-law, Michael's sister, Eddie chans wedding. Many of you first met her in my day in the life of a Japanese car repair worker and probably most recently saw her in my last New Year's video with Junya, today's groom. And this is their typical Japanese wedding, which can be quite different than Western ones. Well, you can let me know in the comments after this video. Also, if there's anything else that I missed. You're good, dude. Ready? Daddy! First, the dress code. Let me just say, it's typically a lot more strict in Japan, as there are countless rules, especially for females. For example, women can't show their shoulders, knees, toes, wear furs, or animal prints. And the list goes on. And when you attend as a family of the bride and groom, you must absolutely follow the rules so they don't lose face. For friends though, I should say there are some gray areas. So Maiko's mom, aka the bride's mom, is wearing a black kimono, also known as kuro tome sode. Each kimono having a class level based on its pattern. This is quite important as it's actually quite rude to wear a higher class kimono than the mother of the bride and groom. The two moms basically decide in advance what they're gonna wear, so none of the other guests shows up to outshine them both. As for men, usually dark suits and white ties are required, but if the wedding is more informal, a colored tie can be worn as well. But basically, no black ties. So yeah, I kinda pushed it a little bit with renting a tux, but I definitely asked Eddie chan if I could wear it in advance, so I didn't piss any of them off. You know, it's a special occasion. Oh. Also, no sunglasses. Okay, so this is the waiting room area. The waiting room. The reception is usually at the front of the waiting room. This is the place where they take attendance and gather the wedding gift money, called goshugi. When you attend a Japanese wedding, you must absolutely bring a wedding gift, which is typically only cash. In addition, it's critical to use a special envelope specifically designed for the wedding gift, where the ribbons are made not to be untied. And the amount itself is critical. Friends and coworkers are expected to give at least 30,000 yen per person, about $225, while cousins and relatives give at least 30,000 yen to 100,000 yen, and immediate family members are expected to gift even more, i.e. Maiko. Oh, and the cash itself must only be brand new bills. Interestingly, Japan being Japan, even yen amounts are not preferred because it can be split, which is bad luck since no one wants to talk about splitting up at a wedding. Also, the amounts with 4 and 9 need to be avoided because the numbers sound like death and suffering in Japanese. Hence, 40,000 yen and 60,000 yen are unacceptable amounts. Again, any of this wrong and your wedding gift could be considered rude. Oh, and usually there'll be a welcome board and table like this to welcome the guests because the bride and group can't. The board itself is probably common all around the world, but maybe the table is not so much. Basically, it represents and shares the couple's favorite activities and interests. The family only meeting. Before the ceremony starts, the family gets to see the bride and groom first before any of the other guests in a separate room. So yeah, no rule about the bride and groom not seeing each other before the wedding. And then later, the extended family meet each other, introduced typically by the father of each side. Now, the gift that keeps on giving. So while we're here and the family is getting introduced, let me quickly talk about the other side of the gift money. While it's quite an investment for a guest, especially if they're attending several in a year, for the bride and groom, who are responsible for the overall wedding costs, also typically bear the cost of out-of-city travel for both family and friends. They'll pay for the transportation and hotel fees, even going as far as to make the reservations. And sometimes for family friends, even organize and pay for the hair to get done just before the ceremony. Isn't Maiko's hair nice? So this looks like the ceremony area right here. Now for the kyoshiki, aka ceremony. Japanese weddings consist of two parts, a ceremony where they exchange vows and a reception followed afterwards. What happened during the ceremony is pretty much the same as western weddings. The groom appears, the bride walks down the aisle with the father, they exchange vows, exchange rings, kiss, and then walk back up the aisle. Oh, and just before they exchange rings, what do you know, Wolfie was the ring bearer. He sure knows how to capture the audience attention. Let's just watch him while I speak about the next point. In Eddie Chen's wedding, this ceremony is held at the reception venue itself, but it's not surprising to have it at a different location like a church, and for more traditional Japanese weddings, at a shrine, with more traditional attire, or even do both versions. These days though, it's fairly typical to do it all at one location, like this wedding. And there you go, package delivered on time. 
Now for the Hiroen, also known as the reception. It's basically a dinner party in a banquet hall, a party to announce to family and friends that they just got married. The seating is decided by the host to ensure that the guests are as comfortable as possible. So I guess the parent side sits all the way in the back because we have us here and then the other parents over there, so... Apparently in Japan, immediate family members are considered as hosts, so they usually are seated in the back. I guess I'm considered part of the immediate family. Dope! And look, we even got presents. When you arrive at your seat, you'll find a bag on it. This is called the Hiki Demono, and it's a gift for the guests to bring back home. Items are carefully chosen by the bride and groom, and it's common to include items like tableware, confections, and even gift catalogs for guests to later choose what type of gifts they want sent to their home. Guests receive this as a thank you for attending the wedding. Before we continue on, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. If you all don't already know, Squarespace is the number one way to build your online presence. In fact, I use Squarespace for my website, Tokyo Zebra. Here are just some of the reasons why I love using Squarespace so much. Whether you're starting your passion project or building a business, Squarespace has all the tools to get it done while also looking ultra sleek and professional at the same time. They support numerous portfolios and gallery designs which you can customize and even password protect so the right people see your work. Use its fully integrated blogging tools and commenting features such as threaded comments, replies, and likes to help engage your community. And my personal favorite, built-in analytics to see how your visits, unique visitors, and page views trend over time. So there you go, go to squarespace.com today for your free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Paolo from Tokyo and get 10% off your first domain or website. Oh, Eddie Chan and Jr. are here. Now the party has officially started. The reception program is run by the venue's MC and between all the entertainment, food, and drinks, it goes by pretty fast. And check this out, we just got some food here. So this is what you would find typically at a Japanese wedding. Not all food is gonna be Japanese, but you do have sashimi here. Got some crab here too, but it just looks so good. The toast. So who does the toast? Well at this wedding, Erichan's boss is doing the toast. You may remember him in my previous video. Usually, a boss or older friend gives a speech and makes a toast at a Japanese wedding. Fun little fact, in the past, bosses and relatives were often invited to weddings as they are typically required to give a greater amount of gift money. But these days, it's become more popular to invite close friends instead to share this occasion. The parent greetings. So in between the program, the parents visit all the tables to greet and thank every single guest for coming. Usually they bring beer bottles so they can pour glasses and do a kampai together. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> so in Japan, you don't have a best man or a best woman best man and bridesmaid. So these ladies and these gentlemen look like they're the best men and bridesmaids, but they're simply helping out with part of the show during the reception. In fact, it's typical not to have a best man or bridesmaid at a Japanese wedding. While we enjoy the program, let me talk about how the wedding invitations work. First of all, Michael, Wolfie, and I were specifically invited to this joyous occasion. But this may or may not be so obvious as there's not really the concept in Japanese weddings of a plus one. If you're attending a Japanese wedding, your name was specifically written on the invitation months in advance as a whole event is so overly planned and follows a strict schedule, coming as an unknown is rare. Oftentimes even, Michael will get invited to her friend's Japanese wedding and I, her husband, won't even be invited and vice versa. It's just how it is. So Michael, when do we start dancing? Is there no dancing? Nobody dance. No, afterwards, like, then we like start to, you know, go up the floor. Unless, so unless you're Western person and, like, plan some Western wedding. The letter reading. At the end of the reception, it's customary to have a letter read to the parents from the daughter. It's usually a heartwarming, teary moment for everyone. And the parents stand in the back, taking it all in. Before the couple leave the room, usually the father of the groom gives the last speech to wrap it all up. Another fun part of a Japanese wedding is the end roll video. They edit the video on the day and play it at the end after the bride and groom leave the room. It's crazy how fast they edit it. You know, it takes Maiko and I several days, if not weeks, to make our video, so it's pretty impressive. In the video itself, you usually see yourself at least once, as well as the highlights of this happy day. Okay, so we are finishing up right now. After this, there's gonna be a Nijikai, which is like an after party, but the family is really not supposed to go. <laughs> the send-off. 
finally, when you're leaving, the bride and groom are the ones that send you off at the entrance with a little gift. So I'm gonna end it here. If you guys like this video, help me out and hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos like this or anything related to Japan, hit that subscribe button and the bell button. I'll catch you guys in the next one.